Nashville, Tennessee. This is Hope for the Caregiver on American Family Radio. We are thrilled to have you with us. 888-589-8840 is the number you want to call. Hey, listen, I know you're thinking you're driving around the country. You're, you're listening all over the country here. And you're thinking, wait a minute, a show for caregivers that's live on Saturday mornings on American Family Radio? Yeah, yeah, it is. Don't adjust your dials. That's what we're doing here. I am Peter Rosenberger, bringing you three decades of experience as a caregiver to help you stay strong and healthy as you take care of someone who is not. Why are we doing this show? Because 65 million Americans, 65 million are currently doing this right now. They're standing between a vulnerable loved one and even worse disaster. How do you help those folks? What does it look like to help those folks? What does it look like to minister to them, to pray with them, to to comfort them, to strengthen them? What does that look like? That's what this show is about. It's called Hope for the Caregiver. And Hope for the Caregiver is the conviction that we as family caregivers can live a calmer, healthier, and dare I say it, a more joyful life, even as we are caring for those who are living with very, very difficult things. How are you doing? How are you holding up? That's the question we want to ask fellow caregivers. And there's always this uncomfortable silence when you ask them because they don't know how to respond. Caregivers are so used to answering for somebody else about somebody else, being asked about somebody else, they don't know how to respond for themselves. And that's what we're on a mission to change here at this show. And I'm so grateful for American Family Radio for seeing what we do, valuing what we do, and putting it on the air and saying, you know what, we're going to reach families with this because every family is dealing with this or will deal with it. Without exception, if you love somebody, you will be a caregiver. If you live long enough, you will need a caregiver. And as last I checked, the aging rate in this country is still at 100%. So we're all getting older. And the mortality rate of this country is still at 100%. Then you throw in children with special needs that can be a lifetime of caregiving for folks. It's not like taking care of somebody who has something that's terminal that's going to be time-oriented for the next couple of years. When you have a child with autism or cerebral palsy, Down syndrome. There's so many different varieties of things. Then you've got traumatic injuries, traumatic brain injuries. Then you've got mental illness. And then you've got addiction issues. Show me somebody with an impairment, and I'll show you somebody in their orbit who's a caregiver who is really struggling, and that's what this show is all about. I've been one myself for now over 32 years for a wife with severe trauma, from a car wreck she had 35 years ago. I met her after the wreck. She'd already had about 20 surgeries by the time I met her. But that's mushroom now to 80 surgeries as of this year that I can count, multiple amputations, seven different insurance companies, 90, 100 doctors, 12 different hospitals, well over $10 million. And it doesn't show any sign of slowing down. So how do you stay engaged and healthy and strong and focused through that kind of nightmare. These are things that I've learned over the years. I am the crash test dummy of caregivers. If you could fail at it, I failed at it. Hey, Peter. Hey. <clears throat> Good morning, sir. Oh, uh, by the way, this is Jim Stanley from Mississippi at American Family Radio. Uh, that is. That's the strange voice that you hear, not the voice of the Lord. <laughs> but back to your question from, from a moment ago of how are you doing, when you ask a caregiver that, a lot of times they're concerned about answering that question for them because they feel like whatever's going on inside of them is nothing compared to the person to whom they're giving care to. But when we ask that question, it's because we want to encourage folks. And we, it, we're not just being polite. When Peter no, says, no. how are you doing? He means, how are you doing? So this morning, if, if, you want, if you need a shot in the arm, if you'd like some encouragement and you want to share your caregiver story, we want to hear from you at 888-589-8840. It really is a live show, as Peter said. I know that sounds strange. 
But I promise you, we're here, and we do have a call screener sitting by waiting for your calls at 1-800-PARDON ME. That's not right. That sounded like a TV commercial. 888-589-8840. I was there for you, Jim, when you went the 800 route. When When I went down burning. It's a very difficult thing for a caregiver to answer that question, but it's a very important thing for the caregiver to answer that question. And uh, by the way, we start off with a scripture here, and I want to read this to you. You can follow along on Facebook Live, too, if you want to watch it at Hope for the Caregiver on Facebook. We stream the show there. And uh, this is Psalm 27, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 27, verse 14. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, why is that important for us as caregivers? What does that even mean? Wait on the Lord. No, we can't wait. We got stuff to do. That's the way our our heads go into that direction. Waiting on the Lord doesn't mean just sitting around twiddling your thumbs. It it also means being patient as you go about the task that you're doing, knowing that he's going to reveal himself in this. This is going to make sense at some point. Maybe not in our lifetime on earth, but it will make sense. And every promise that he's given, he's going to uphold it. He's not going to abandon you in this. We may have to endure season, a long season, in my case, three-decade season of this path. But that doesn't mean he's abandoned us. That doesn't mean he's letting us go. That doesn't mean he's not watching this and working his purposes in it. We just can't see it right now. But when you've done this for a couple of decades, you start to see things a little bit differently. So my responsibility is to come to you as somebody who is doing this now for just a season. Maybe you're just maybe you're just brand new into this. And you're thinking, when is this going to end? May not end for a long time. So what do we do about you in this process? As Jim said, how do you stay healthy in this uh and and your situation? Why why shouldn't you talk about yourself in this thing? If you're not in a good place, how in the world are you going to be a good caregiver? If you're full of resentment and fear, how in the world are you going to do this? That's what this show is all about. And if you want to share that, if this this is your time, don't wait till the end of the show. Because that's what happens. They all pile up on Jim. That's why Jim jumped in, because they all pile up at the last five minutes of the show. (laughs) They're trying to screen the calls. 888-589-8840. This is your time to call. Now, while you're doing that, I also want to tell you about uh, an encounter I had with a, a physician, uh, a friend of mine wanted me to meet with this gentleman who was taking care of his wife with Parkinson's. And so I went and had a cup of coffee with him, and I'm looking at him. The first thing I noticed, um, and Jim, how much time do we got before the break? We are just about a minute uh, to the break. Your, your music will start presently. Okay. By the way, the music that you're hearing, that's my theme song. I wrote it. <laughs> I wrote it with my buddy Chris Latham, who's a Grammy Award-winning engineer here in Nashville. And uh, he was um, – I'll share this, and then I'll come back, and when we get to the next segment, I'll tell you about this physician. But uh, um, Chris and I uh, went to college together many years ago, and he was working out at Opryland. You know those um, those 10 Lizzie cars, those old-timey cars the ride that they have at the amusement park? He was working on this, and he was developing this melody in his head. This was 30 years ago. And then about that same time, I was working on a, a groove on a guitar and a piano. And so when I had to uh, come up with a theme song for the show, I went to Chris. I said, hey, let's, let's put this thing down. And so we put this melody that he's been working on and this groove that I've been working on, and we put it down. And this is the theme song. We don't have any lyrics. So, Jim, we may need to write some lyrics for this song. Like, this is the theme for Peter's show. Wow. No. <clears throat> let's not. No, we won't do. No. Listen. Don't mess up a good thing. Hey, listen, we'll be right back. Don't don't go away. This is your show as a caregiver. We speak fluent caregiver here. This is your time to call in. Don't waste it. 888. I don't care if you're nervous about it. It's okay. We'll, we'll cover that. 888-589-8840. This is Peter Rosenberger. This is Hope for the Caregiver. On- Have you ever struggled to trust God when lousy things happen to you? I'm Gracie Rosenberger, and in 1983, I experienced a horrific car accident leading to 80 surgeries and both legs amputated. 
I questioned why God allowed something so brutal to happen to me. But over time, my questions changed, and I discovered courage to trust God. That understanding, along with an appreciation for quality prosthetic limbs, led me to establish Standing with Hope. For more than a dozen years, we've been working with the government of Ghana and West Africa, equipping and training local workers to build and maintain quality prosthetic limbs for their own people. On a regular basis, we purchase and ship equipment and supplies. And with the help of inmates in a Tennessee prison, we also recycle parts from donated limbs. All of this is to point others to Christ, the source of my hope and strength. Please visit StandingWithHope.com to learn more and participate in lifting others up. That's StandingWithHope.com. I'm Gracie, and I am Standing With Hope. This is what we were created for. The saddle of your horses. We got a trail to play. Through the wild, through the under God's amazing grace. Welcome back to the show for caregivers, about caregivers, hosted by a caregiver. This is Hope. For the caregiver, I am Peter Rosenberger, bringing you three decades of experience to help you stay strong and healthy. We're saddling up our horses and we're blazing the trail for the rest of us who are serving as caregivers right now to stay strong and healthy as we take care of someone who is not. If you want to be on the show, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. I want to go straight to the phone. We'll get to some of the stories we'll tell you a little bit later, but I, I make a Commitment, if you call in, I'm going to bring it to a screeching halt because it's hard enough for a caregiver to reach out in their own voice, and we want to take that uh, as quickly as we can. So let me go to Rhonda in Tennessee. Rhonda? Hey, good morning. How are you feeling? I'm doing okay. That doesn't, you're not uh, convincing me, Rhonda. I'm not. I just, I just have a question. I- my husband and I have been together for about 20 years, and six years ago he went on dialysis. And for the past couple of years he's really declined, and I've been his sole caregiver. Um, he doesn't drive anymore, is unable to work, um, different things like that. Um, the Lord has really brought me through a lot with him, multiple, and as you know, surgery, a car wreck, just different things. But I'm to the point now where I feel so much resentment and like my life has been taken from me. Like I can't, you know, go on, we can't go on vacation. Um, We can't do things with friends, um, things like that. And I find myself resenting him and kind of taking it out on him, not really wanting to, but it just, It just happened. And, you know, I know he doesn't have very long because the doctors have told me, but, you know, and his declining, you know, I don't want to feel that way. I want him to know that I love him and that, you know, I don't want him to leave me, but, you know, trying to prepare, you know. So I just don't know how to get over that resentment. I mean, I've prayed about it and, you know, but I'm just to the point where what else do I do? I, I think, Rhonda, first off, thank you because you're speaking for so many people right now. Resentment is a huge issue for so many of us as caregivers. Uh, sometimes it's the loved one we're taking care of. Sometimes it's family and friends that don't help the way we want them to. Sometimes it's at ourselves. Sometimes it's at, it's at God. The goal for you here, Rhonda, is one day you're going to stand at a grave. That's the goal is for you to be the one standing. I mean, I, I hate to say it that bluntly, but that's the way it is. But we don't want you, me, or any of us to stand there with clenched fist. I'm a pianist, and I learned a while back that I can't play a piano very well if I'm playing with clenched fist. And in order for me to make the kind of music that I need to make, I need to let my hands open up and let go of some of these things. Part of this starts with when we start thinking this is all up to us, and that's an obligation trap that we fall into we've got to we should we have to be we need to be we're supposed to be all that kind of stuff is obligation and i've learned through the hard way again remember i am the crash test dummy of caregivers that it's stewardship Mm -hmm. instead of obligation stewardship means i am not the owner of this i didn't do this to my wife you didn't do this to your husband you can't undo it 
And so right. what we what we want to do instead is realize, okay, this doesn't belong to me. I didn't do this. I am responsible for certain tasks, and this is unpleasant, and I don't particularly like it. But God owns this. Now, he hasn't forgotten you in this. He hasn't abandoned you. But this is a difficult place that we signed up for as spouses, or if we bring a child into this world with special needs. And we're going to walk through this, but we cannot, I don't, I don't think you ever get over resentment. I think you work through resentment. Um, I think that you will, that, that's a trap that we as caregivers fall into. And the way we push back against that is constantly reminding ourselves that we didn't do this. We can't change this. We can't fix this. But what we can do is we can learn to calm ourselves down in the midst of it and realize I'm responsible to do the best that I can. And that's it. That's it. And if okay. you can't do it, and then, and then I carve out time for myself to do certain things. Now, I'm landlocked just like you are. Gracie and I just can't just up and go like other couples can do that. Neither can you. Right. But but I do carve yeah, out you... things for myself. Like I sit at the yeah. piano and play. Like I, I do martial arts or something. And I find those those pockets of time. I, I don't find the extended time that I want to be able to do, but I find pockets of time. Is there something that you really, really, really enjoy doing yourself? Yeah, I mean, I'm a nurse, and you know, and 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 so I I work and I work nights, and that's an you know, and a whole other issue. I had to leave a you know a job that I kind of you know really loved and to go to nights to something else to be with him. And, you know, I just love to just craft and just, you know, go out to eat with friends um, and just spend time, you know, just alone time. And, you know, I find myself not getting to do that because I work um, at night and then, you know, I have to sleep and take care of him during the day. And, you know, it's like all that, you know, you see all these people posting pictures or you're we're at the beach or, you know, we're in the islands and. You're like, yeah, I'm on my way to work or, you know, here I am at work or sitting at home, you know, and I don't make time for myself. I, do, I don't well, do that. Well, let's, let's, the- let's don't try to go to the islands. Instead, why don't we do this? <laughs> why don't you, because that's, we all want to do that, but it's hard to do that kind of thing. But what we can do is do one hour. Can you find one hour today to do something just for you, just for you? I mean, if it's crafts, if it's music, if it's gardening, I don't care what it is. If it, going out to eat with a friend, just do it. Just do it. And you think, well, what's going to happen to him? What's going to happen? To him? You know what? He's going to have stuff whether you're there or not. And, and that, But one hour you can do. And sometimes I'll just close the door and I'll just play the piano for one hour. But find one hour, and then I want you to do one other thing. Don't feel guilty for doing it. Okay. Because the healthier you are, the better you're going to be able to care for him. And he doesn't need or deserve a caregiver that's resentful towards him. Right. And, and the way you're going to push back uh, resentful behavior that you have or uh, feelings that you have is that you're going to embrace healthier stuff for you. And you're going to take care of Rhonda today for one hour, just one hour. That's all I'm asking. And everybody that's listening right now is agreeing with you and rejoicing with you that you're going to take one hour just for Rhonda and celebrate, enjoy, and let your heart breathe a little bit for one hour. And then we're going to do it again tomorrow, Rhonda. And then we're going to do it again the next day. And pretty soon you're going to find that you're going to go to the islands without even going to the islands because you're going to be taking your own heart up. And that's what our goal is on this show. This is a marathon, and you have got to be strong for this but you're not going to be doing it if you're isolated and resentful. And what you've done today, you've called a show, a crazy guy on the air at 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, (laughs) and you called this guy and said, here's what's going on with me. That's an an amazing step, and we are all rejoicing with you because you did something very, very good for Rhonda. And when it's good for Rhonda, when it's healthy for Rhonda, it's going to spill over into everybody that Rhonda takes care of and engages with. Gotcha. Does, that, does that does that track? Do you? Yeah, how long is you, how long is your commute to work? It's about thirty minutes. My book is an audio book. You can download it. 
And I think if you have Audible, it's, you get two free downloads a month. Hope for the Caregiver. That's the name of the book. It's, I read the whole book. And it's, it, I tell people it's so easy you can read it in the bathroom. I know because that's where I wrote it. That's funny, y'all. Y'all should be laughing. And <laughs> get, thank you for the mercy laugh, Rhonda. Wah, but, wah. <laughs> but let me, if I, and then I've got a CD called Songs for the Caregiver. And it's just me playing and then Gracie singing about half of it. And Gracie's a no kidding singer. And you can download that. It's on iTunes. These are things I've put out okay. there for you as a caregiver to accompany you in this journey so that you know that you're not alone. I, the one thing I don't want you to do, Rhonda, is when you get off work, work in the night shift, and you're in the parking lot at the hospital and you have a meltdown and you're all by yourself. Yeah. That I don't, that I don't want to happen. And I, I, want to make, I want you to just, if, if nothing else, listen to my book, listen to my CD. That's what it's there for. I tested that CD on myself. It's guaranteed to reduce road rage. I was in Atlanta traffic on 285 during rush hour, and I never gave the finger of fellowship to anybody. I, I was calm the whole time I was listening to it. So I tested it on myself. It's guaranteed to reduce road rage. That's funny again. Yeah, that's uh, y'all, y'all, re- we got to have a laugh track here, Jim. I mean, no kidding. I don't but, think it would work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Hold on. Let me reach out and pull this knife out of my back. Um, but Rhonda? I'm committed that you're not doing this alone. Okay? That's my commitment to you. And and I I'm, I only get one hour a week with you here on American Family Radio, but I want to maximize that as much as I can because you're speaking for so many who are doing exactly what you're doing. I know it. Done it. Been there. Done that. Got the T-shirt. Yeah. And still have to do it. But you promised me one hour today of Rhonda time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're going to let us know how that went? Yes, I will. Thank you so much. I am proud of you. I am proud of you. I am proud of you. And if I am, and I'm just some guy on the radio, imagine imagine what your Heavenly Father is thinking of you. And we're all cheering you on, Rhonda. We're all cheering you on. There's a great cloud of witness, Hebrew says, that are cheering you on. We're proud of you, okay? All right. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Uh, Jim? Yes, sir. Can I, can I, I don't think I have time to get, I've got Virginia. You, yep. We've got Tracy from Virginia beach. Jen is on the road and then Dana from diamond head. So you got, I've got, I've got them lined up here. Do I have, what time, how much time do I got? You are about to hit your music in All right, listen, 15 seconds. We're going to go in a minute here. Hey, standing with hope.com standing with hope.com. I'm heading to Africa next month. We're putting legs on amputees. This is a vision Gracie had when she lost her own legs, and we're taking a team over there. You want to help us go and lift others up? They go walking and leaping and praising God. It's a very cool thing to see. Standingwithhope.com. We could use your help. A couple team members still need some help uh, with their sponsorship. I'm going. Standingwithhope.com, and you can see an extraordinary ministry that is, uh, well, gives a gift that keeps on walking. We'll be right back. This is Hope for the Caregiver on American Family Radio, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. This is a show for you as a caregiver. I'm Peter Rosenberger. We'll be right back. Have you ever struggled to trust God when lousy things happen to you? I'm Gracie Rosenberger, and in 1983, I experienced a horrific car accident leading to 80 surgeries and both legs amputated. I questioned why God allowed something so brutal to happen to me. But over time, my questions changed, and I discovered courage to trust God. That understanding, along with an appreciation for quality prosthetic limbs, led me to establish Standing with Hope. For more than a dozen years, we've been working with the government of Ghana and West Africa, equipping and training local workers to build and maintain quality prosthetic limbs for their own people. On a regular basis, we purchase and ship equipment and supplies, and with the help of inmates in a Tennessee prison, we also recycle parts from donated limbs. All of this is to point others to Christ, the source of my hope and strength. Please visit StandingWithHope.com to learn more and participate in lifting others up. That's StandingWithHope.com. I'm Gracie, and I am Standing With Hope. Trying to be perfect, all the fears, all the lies. Faith 
Welcome back to Hope for the Caregiver on American Family Radio. This is Peter Rosenberger bringing you three decades of experience to help you stay strong and healthy as you take care of someone who is not. And if you want to be on the show, 888-589-8840. 888-589-8840. I love that song, Jim, because we're trying to be perfect. That's what, That's the problem, the trap a lot of caregivers fall into is we push ourselves to extremes over perfection. And we're going to come up short. We're simply going to come up short. We're not looking for perfection as a caregiver. We're looking for progress. We're looking for a healthy choices. This is a marathon. Our Savior's perfect. Okay? Amen. And I'm not talking about the spiritual sense of when he says, be perfect as I am perfect. I'm talking about we push ourselves to the extreme, to the breaking point of trying to do something that is beyond us to do. Tracy from Virginia Beach. Tracy, how are you feeling this morning? Uh, good morning. I'm fine. How are y'all? Well, I'm just precious. Thank you for asking. Tell me what's going on in your life. Well, um, I am taking care of my 93-year-old mother who has um, dementia, kind of started about a year ago. Um, and, you know, it's a learning process for me. And I am new to the faith of uh, believing in Jesus Christ. I was never a churchgoer, never, you know, agnostic if I had to be one or whatever. And dealing with my mom, I was at my wit's end. I I was ready to just walk away and say, yeah, one of my brothers can do it. I can't do it. And a lot of other issues in my personal life brought me to Christ. And when I was at my wit's end, starting about last November through December, January, I was literally, you know, praying, God, something's got to happen for my life to turn around and for me to deal with my mom and her dementia because it's hard. She all, you know, she just repeats everything. She doesn't have, she has no retention of any current information. She can tell you all about 1930s and 40s and sing all the songs, but she couldn't remember what she ate in two minutes. Well, that's what dementia Christ, that's what dementia does. And and it yes. and it robs them of their short term the, the the filing cabinet of their long term memories are already there. I have a dementia care specialist that calls in periodically and we go through various topics and I podcast those things and you can see that it's for free at my podcast, which is caregiverpodcast dot com. I came up with the name myself. Mm-hmm. And uh nice. <laughs> But it's uh, caregiverpodcast.com. Subscribe to it. There's there's a whole library of stuff uh, and talks about that, everything from when they don't want to eat to taking them to church. I mean, we have so many things out there. Yeah. But the, the bottom line with dementia, and I want to just share this with you, is that you're dealing with two entities. You're dealing with your mom and you're dealing with the disease. And yeah. most of the time you're going to be dealing with the disease. And so the only way you're going to survive this is if you detach from this and not not try to somehow attach all the emotional components of the relationship with your mother into that disease. You've got three people now in the relationship, or three entities, you, your mom, and dementia. Right, you're right. And most of the time, you're going to be finding that you're going, it's going to be a moving target at best, and then dementia at, at worst. And and so you detach from it and not try to wrestle dementia to the ground and beat it because you can't. It'll beat you. Well, you know what I was finding I was doing for a while? I was trying to keep her in reality. And when she would swear that she drove yesterday when she hasn't driven in a year, and I'm like, Mom, you haven't driven in a year, and she'd argue, well, I've learned to be, you know, just – some of it you just can't keep them in reality, and you can't argue every point. Well, and, you can't, and you um, can't go to every fight that you get a ticket to with them. So the the, the person to keep in reality is you. Yeah, she's not going to stay in reality. She can't anymore. You know, my wife is missing no. both legs. I cannot ask her to get up and start walking unless she has prosthetic legs on. That's reality. Right. And so, it's important for you to stay in reality more than her at this point. And so it's okay for her to argue, well, how was the drive, mom? You know, instead of saying, mom, you haven't driven, how was the drive? How did it feel? You know, and you deflect because I promise you, she's going to flit to another subject in a a matter of seconds, moments, you know, and. Yeah. And 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 I have learned to do that. And I, and I gotta be honest, um, 
Jesus Christ coming into my heart in these last six months has um, given me the fortitude and the wisdom to to do this, and and I've got a calming that has come over me. That yeah, I don't argue every point. You know, I instead of telling her that she has bo, it's like, oh, your shirt has bo. Oh, it does, and then that will prompt. You know, hey, let's clean that shirt. And while we're at it, <laughs> that's it. That's perfect. That is so perfect. And and that's what you do. You remember and that? I've, remember I've that? Learned. That game we had when we were growing up uh, called Rock'em Sock'em Robots, where we had yes. to knock the block off. This is how yep. we as caregivers My get. Had one. Well, this is how we as caregivers get with uh, the the issues that we're facing with. We seem to want to go round and round and just square off and just start fighting until somebody gets till we win. Well, we're not going to win right. against this. We can't win against this. It is unwinnable. You're absolutely right. Um, and so what we do is we learn to deflect these things, and we just block it. I, I, you'll hear often that I, I take martial arts. I, I'm a second-degree black belt in Hapkido. Why is that important? Because Hapkido is a self-defense art. I'm not going out there trying to attack people. I'm defending myself. Now, you don't. first off, you don't defend what you don't value. So we as caregivers need to learn to value our own heart, our own peace of mind, our own sanity. That's important. We've got to keep that because, like you said, she's not going to live in reality, but you have to. So yeah. we learned instead of when somebody wants to attack me, I'm not going to go square off and go toe-to-toe with them. I'm not boxing them. I'm going to deflect them and block that and send their energy off somewhere else and just not, not get engaged with it emotionally. This is the journey we yeah. have as caregivers. So what you're doing, you're learning, and it's, it's uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, because this is your mom, and it's the same face, it's the same voice. But when you have, as you said, the mind of Christ comes into this, and it gives you that calmness to be able to realize, okay, she's broken. I didn't break her. I can't right. undo this. But I'm going to honor her and realize that this is not up to me to fix this. And one of the things I tell myself and I tell fellow caregivers, look down at your hands. If you don't see nail prints, this ain't yours to fix. <laughs> That's very true. So, very true. But we, I, I but we do have one that does have and, nail prints. Yes, and I, I have given it over to him in the sense of, you know, directing and giving me, again, I just I pray a lot for the, the fortitude of patience. And I will um, reiterate about, and I'll tell you where I'm at right now. So I'm, I'm from Virginia Beach, but I'm on my way to D.C., and I literally pulled off on the road rest area to make this phone call, and I was randomly scanning radio stations, and yours came through, and, and it, you know, God spoke to me through the radio again, and um, I will turn 55 tomorrow, and I am on my way to D.C. My brothers are taking care of my mom today and tomorrow because I needed to get away every so often. And I'm going to D.C. to celebrate my birthday with my cousin. I, well, you know what? I'll be 55 on Monday. And so happy birthday. Oh, nice. <laughs> happy birthday. And, you know, I think you're doing something extraordinary for yourself. Your brothers will be fine. Tell them the same thing I told you this morning that you, you got you you don't have to go toe to toe with dementia because you're going to lose if you do, and yeah, and you're you're doing exactly what you need to be doing now. Promise me and promise this audience, promise yourself that you're not going to feel guilty while you do it. I'm not. I have learned. Okay. No, I'm not <laughs> because because uh, if I don't do this and if we as the caregivers don't take care of ourselves mentally, emotionally, heart and soul, we're not going to make it. Nope. But you know what? So I, your I'm, mother I'm your gonna... mother may not make it. The people we take care of may not make it, but we have to. Yes. That's that's the hard reality. And I'm sorry, that's just blunt, but, you know, I didn't make the rules. This is the way it is, and we have to live right. in reality. Your mother's not living in reality, but you have to. And this is why we do the show. And I just want, first off, happy birthday and have a great time. And I've got, Jim's got a whole line of calls here that I've got to get to. <clears throat> but but yeah, I, no, and, and happy birthday to you too, and I appreciate the call and the and the radio and the information and um uh, and and you know just I don't know you and your whole situation other than the few minutes I've heard, but um obviously you're doing a good job also, 
um, for, you know, helping your wife and helping, you know, hundreds and thousands, thousands of other people with, with caregiving responsibilities. So thank you, too, and happy birthday to you, too. Well, thank you. That is very gracious of you. <laughs> Caregiverpodcast.com. You get the free podcast there. All right, Jim, yeah. let's um, – Hey, yeah, Peter, you. Bye-bye. let me say this. Bye-bye. Tracy, thanks for listening this morning. Thank you, Tracy. Thanks for calling in. And thanks she, for pulling over to t- take a call instead of driving. That's right. She <laughs> was calling uh, – she was listening to WARN out of Culpeper. Virginia, and so oh, we're very happy that she was able to scan the dial and find us. Take us with you anywhere you go via AFR.net or our app for both iPhones and Androids. That commercial was brought to you courtesy of American <laughs> Family Radio. Now, back to the phones, good <laughs> sir. And hey, Jim, do I have time to go to Jen or Karen? Uh, you Who have. T- you've got Dana. Coming Dana. up next, and you can you can get started and probably have to carry her over. All right, Dana uh, from Mississippi. Dana, how are you feeling this morning? Um, good. Um, that doesn't sound very convincing, Dana. <laughs> no, um, I want to comment on the remark you made at the beginning of your program. Um, how are you? Um, four years ago, my mom was other than diabetes she was perfectly healthy she was in the hospital for diabetes um she they done tests on her and found out that she had like two valves in her heart that were 100 percent blocked two that were 98 percent. they didn't even know how she was walking and she was fine other than her diabetes and um so they gave her um a a year to live dana yes unfortunately we got to go to a quick break it's just a quick break can you hang on through the break Sure, sure. Don't don't go away. We just we just got to take a quick break. We're up against a hard time, um, so don't go away because I want to hear about this and I want to hear how you're doing. This is Hope for the Caregiver on American Family Radio. Hope for the Caregiver dot com if you want to see more about it. And we're thrilled to have you along with us. Healthy caregivers make better caregivers. So let's get healthy together so that we can continue on this road and stay stronger and healthier. Hey, listen, this is Peter Roseberger. Glad you're with us. We'll be right back. Have you ever struggled to trust God when lousy things happen to you? I'm Gracie Rosenberger, and in 1983, I experienced a horrific car accident leading to 80 surgeries and both legs amputated. I questioned why God allowed something so brutal to happen to me. But over time, my questions changed, and I discovered courage to trust God. That understanding, along with an appreciation for quality prosthetic limbs, led me to establish Standing with Hope. For more than a dozen years, we've been working with the government of Ghana and West Africa, equipping and training local workers to build and maintain quality prosthetic limbs for their own people. On a regular basis, we purchase and ship equipment and supplies. And with the help of inmates in a Tennessee prison, we also recycle parts from donated limbs. All of this is to point others to Christ, the source of my hope and strength. Please visit StandingWithHope.com to learn more and participate in lifting others up. That's StandingWithHope.com. I'm Gracie, and I am Standing With Hope. that you're with us. Thank you for joining us. 888-589-8840. Jim, who is that singing that song? Come to the table. That's a great question. And I had that answer right on the tip of my tongue because I, I put I've, them all in this week and uh, that I, come to I the never table. heard that song before, but I love that song. Yeah. I come to the table, sit by one who is redeemed. That's what we're all about here. And um, some of us are redeemed uh, and still living with some things that need to be redeemed in our lives. And uh, some of us are struggling along the path and wondering, what does this whole redemption thing mean? And I'm on a mission to help my fellow caregivers understand that hope for the caregivers is this conviction that we can live a calmer, healthier, and even more joyful life. All of this is handled at the cross, every bit of this. And we have a season of this life on this earth that we may have to endure very, very painful, difficult things. But in that process, he's revealing himself to us in ways that we can't understand. That's three decades of experience telling you this. So 
Uh, anyway, let me get back to Dana. Dana, you still with us? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your patience and, and for waiting. All right. So how are you feeling? Um, like I said, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm better now. Um, and the thing that I was saying that, that drawn me to this conversation was the question, how are you as a caregiver? And like I was saying earlier, my mom had a year to live four years ago. She died three years ago, and I had to take care of her that year. And, um, and it, was, it was bad. And I had my church and my deacons and elders calling me every day. What can I do for you, Dana? Are you okay? How are you? How are you? I heard that hundreds of times. And my answer was always, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything's good. I'm okay. Hindsight. I wish I would have said I am just literally dying inside. I, I, I can't exist. And I want to say to any caregiver out there, never say you're okay if you're not. I want you to stand up and say, I'm falling apart. I need some help. I need some prayers. And that how are you question just struck me so hard. Because had I had it to over again, I would not have said, oh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm fine. Everything's good. Um, And... That's basically it. I just, I will, again, you know, she passed away three years ago. And, um, but in that year's time, that was the hardest time of my life. And I would tell anyone, never say, I'm okay if you're not. You know, How you've, done, you? you've done something extraordinary this morning, Dana, that you've, um, you've opened up your own heart and shared your own pain, your own grief for the express purpose of strengthening others and equipping others to get through this a little bit better. And that is a great gift. And you went through a painful process and learned some hard things, but that's the whole point of this is we share our scars. We bear one another's burdens. We uh, go ahead and just say, this is who we are. That's, that's how we overcome. It says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Our testimony is our own journey, our own experience with Christ, our own experience in healing and even our own failures. And, um, again, I'm the crash test dummy of caregivers. If you fail at it, I failed at it. But in the process, we tell these things, we share these things for the purpose of strengthening our fellow caregivers, our, our fellow brothers and sisters. And what you've done this morning is, is wonderful. I, I can't, I can't extol that enough. I cannot tell you how big a deal that is because there are people right now listening all over the country on American family radio, all over the world. And they're hearing what you're saying, and you're giving them the courage to step forth and say, I'm struggling. Now, Christ will meet us in our wounds. He will. I promise you, he will. But if we're so busy covering up all these things and hiding with these things, we're not going to be able to get healing in them. Now, that's that's hard experience on my part to share that to you, and Dana's the same way. So, Dana, thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And I, and I appreciate you calling in the show. It takes a lot of guts to do that. And I appreciate you sharing your heart on this, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, listen, we got uh, Lynn in Arkansas. Hi. Can Lynn, you are you with okay? us? Yes. Can you hear me now? Oh, I can hear you just fine. How are you feeling this morning? Oh, I'm fine. Um, I called before I was a caregiver. My mom has passed. And one thing I wanted to say, when you were talking to the woman about um, doing something for herself for like an hour or whatever, um, I had a friend in my Bible study who came like about once a week and stayed an hour or two. And it was invaluable to me because um, my family did pay for a caregiver to come and give me a day off, but often... I had to come home because something was going on or whatever. It wasn't truly a day off. There were always seemed to be connections going on. But um, the agency wouldn't send anyone out for under two hours. So sometimes something came up that was the spur of the moment, and I couldn't go, and it was really frustrating. Um, and so this woman who volunteered to do that was just such a blessing and I I think it's something in church that um, I know there's a woman who 
um, is taking care of her husband with Alzheimer's, and I thought, well, that's something I could do. An hour or two is is just huge. <laughs> It is, so that's and, and that's that's a way that the church can help. And this is this is what I want, I'm on a mission to do as well to help the church understand how they can help with this. Can we sit with your loved one while you go to your own doctor and get a physical? Can we sit with your loved one while you just go to the park? Now, there's a yeah. twofold issue here. You have to number one go, and they have to come, and so you can't go uh-huh. and and then rush right back the moment. So it's turn your phone off, get away, turn it off. You know, um, when I go to martial arts and I'll be leaving right after I do the show here and I'll go over there and get beat up a little bit, but it's good for me. You know, my instructor is not going to allow me to be on my cell phone while I'm sitting there getting thrown around. You know, I mean, I have to turn it off. That's my time to do this. And and that so you you hit on a subject that is very near and dear to my heart, which is that the church can do this. This is one of the reasons we're on American Family Radio is because we feel passionately that the church should be way out in front of this issue when it comes to helping the family caregiver. I'm tired. I don't know about you, but I am tired of the world dictating social issues on how they should be handled when I believe the church has the mandate. And we, we need to be out in front and this is how we do it. We, you know, we got short term problems under control at the church, wherever two or three are gathered, there's macaroni and cheese. We got that. We know what to do when it comes to short-term. But when it comes to long-term problems, we don't quite have the vocabulary and the plan down. This is what I'm on a mission to help do, is to help equip pastors and lay people and so forth. What does it look like to help a caregiver? And it doesn't look like saying, let me know if there's something I can do. It looks like saying, hey, I'm at the grocery store. Do you need some milk? So you don't have to go out. Hey, I'm at the dry cleaners. Can I pick up your stuff? Hey, I, I, you know, can we can we come over and clean your gutters? Hey, can we sit with you while you go out for about an hour? Go to a movie. Just go to a movie. Whatever you need to do. Just go to a park. Play a round of golf. It doesn't matter. Can we sit with your loved one while you do that? So you hit on something that is just wonderful. So thank you for sharing that, okay? Uh, you're welcome. All righty. Listen, I'm going to run to um, let's see that, uh, Pamela in North Carolina. Are you still with us? Hi. How are you feeling? Well, I am feeling wonderful, and I wanted to just thank you so much for doing what you're doing. Well, um, thank you I'm, for listening. Well, you're going to have to thank God for that because normally I don't listen to the